Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Camouflage of the World. I'm Mike B, and today we're going to be going over the current issue uniform for the U.S. Army. And I don't know if it's official or unofficial for the U.S. Air Force and various other branches that decided that this uniform was cool. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have the camera sitting here for the first like half of the video while I kind of go over the history and how this came to be and why it's technically not multicam and how that whole thing happened and blah, blah, blah. And then I'll talk a little bit about the valiant waste of time, money, resources, and lives that went into, you know, UCP versus this pattern, et cetera, et cetera. So... Basically, it kind of starts out in 2014 when the military realized that UCP was a universal, absolutely fucking failure and decided that they needed to replace the pattern with something new. And they also needed to improve the uniform, which is what the second half will be kind of focused on as I remove the camera from its little stand and get closer and I'll give my opinions and stuff kind of on that at the end. But so basically 2014 said that, or the, the army said that, okay, yeah, a, uh, UCP, if I call it ACU, I mean UCP, I know ACU is the cut of the uniforms, just a habit. Um, we're going to retire that and we're going to go with something else. And apparently the uh, National Defense Authorization Act, NDAA, restricted the choices of like what they had and like the options they had and basically said that they couldn't adopt a new like pattern that they didn't already have within their inventory from the army's freaking test labs and all that shit or that they had licensing for. So basically what happened in like the early 2000s in order to understand this, we have to go back to when uh, cry precision, which is the owner and designer of multicam was kind of trying to get the government contract. The government initially said, well, it's too expensive. And we have this pattern that we engineered called universal camouflage pattern. And we're going to go with that. Well, they had also kind of been competing with multicam at that point, the uh, Army Engineering Lab, with this pattern, which is called Scorpion. Um, it looks like multicam at first, but it's not. However, both patterns, uh, Scorpion and multicam, are exponentially better than UCP so but at that point it was all about money and cutting costs and, and trying new things and getting into the 21st century with digital camouflage so we went with UCP anyway all that shit aside um, they decided to call this the um, operational camouflage pattern OCP and with that they said okay there needs to be a few things that we design on the uniform itself that are a little bit different not only the pattern, but some other things that we'll talk about in a second. So basically this pattern itself here, I'll just, at this point, I will take the camera out of its little stand here. And the pattern itself is very similar to multicam, but there's a couple differences that allowed the research and development labs or whatever to get away with actually making this and not have a licensing issue. Basically, it's got a different colored background. Um, the, the base color, the background of, of OCP changes from a, uh, basically a light green, which is multicam's kind of dominant color, to a light brown. And the pattern itself is all horizontal. If you actually look at this, we'll go up close and... Sorry, I have the camera shaking a little bit. Um, you see that the pattern generally is horizontal, right? Not kind of in the pockets. I'm talking about the main area right here. You, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, Multicam actually has some vertical shapes and stuff in there. And there's some other little differences that allowed it to be just different enough from Multicam for them to actually be able to produce this and call it something different. But essentially, if you really look at it, the colors and everything are almost identical to Multicam, which is fine. Uh, I don't give a shit about bureaucracy. I give a shit about uh, small companies getting screwed out of giant government contracts. But then again... It is what it is. I guess that's the nature of the beast when you're dealing with a government that plays that kind of game. Anyway, all that shit aside, if, I mean, there's people that go into bigger rants about that than I do. I am very happy with this choice. Uh, I never got to wear this stuff because I got out in 2012, even though I still put my little uniform together just to kind of have as an example. And for delusions of grandeur, if I ever decide to join again, which is not going to fucking happen... Um, but anyway, I just decided to put this together because it looks cool. I think it's a lot more aesthetically pleasing than UCP right off the bat. 
it looks more like a military uniform. It looks like camouflage. It looks like uh, what Woodland has always strived to be. Uh, there are issues with it though. There are issues with the actual pattern itself, which I will be doing a camouflage test. I'm sure Brent0331 has already done one, so you can go check out his channel, but I'll be doing one on the northern woods of Wisconsin next summer when there's not 10 feet of snow on the ground and it's 30 below. I'll be testing this out to kind of see how it works. Um, I'll actually try a spring camouflage test because I think it would work really well in the spring up here. It's not as green as it might look in person. It's a little bit more faded and kind of mute. But like with the uh, old school Ertl and the, or ERDL, sorry, I call it Ertl, and um, like the World War II British patterns and a lot of really effective camouflage patterns, DPM, you see that right here in the pattern, it, it's not just a solid break in the color. Uh, you've got some solid breaks, like right here. This, this whole area right here looks like woodland, M81. But then you go over to here and you see that there's fading right there, there's bleeding edges, which is actually really good. And I like that in the camouflage pattern. Because of the fact that when you look out in nature, not all of the lines and, and everything blends perfectly and they're not all sharp cuts like this right here. Some of the colors that you see to the eye fade and, and blend together and then the light hits it, it reflects differently. So that's a really cool thing. Now, we'll get into the actual construction of the uniform. Again, I wore UCPs or ACUs uh, when I was in many years ago, or not many years ago now, but uh, and not a lot changed, but enough did to where I think it's a little bit more desirable than the original ACU. First of all, you got a 50-50 nylon cotton rip stop material, which is fine. I mean, it doesn't breathe extremely well. I'd rather have 100% cotton, but I understand why they added the nylon in for the strength. I get that because it does last a little bit longer. These just seem to be w more well-made than the ACUs were initially. Just, well, more kind of attention to detail and the stitching is a little bit better. I have never worn these in a setting where I was training or doing anything hardcore, so I can't really attest to that. Maybe if you guys are currently serving or whatever, you can let us know how it works. But um, one big difference I did notice is the pockets, right? So on the ACUs, obviously you've got the stupid freaking slanted pockets for um, on, on your shoulders that have Velcro to open up the, the pockets and shit falls out of them all the time. And then you have the, the flap on top, which your flag always gets weird and it's in the way and whatever. And then you have underneath the flag, you had the IR glint tape right there, which is now a separate piece, not on the pocket. You got the little cover right here. So you can cover that up when you're not using it, which is pretty cool. Uh, that Velcro would wear out a lot on the pockets just because most people would leave it open and it would get worn out when you open and close it. On this one, that's not the case. So you've got the pocket here and you've also got zippers. A lot more quiet than Velcro. Opening Velcro pocket sucks. This also allows you to keep it a lot more secure. So you got the pocket in there. It's about the same size as the other pocket, maybe a little bit bigger because you don't have the top flap to account for, you know, bulging shit out and you still have to get to it, whatever. So it might be a little bit bigger, but you know, for unit patches and all that stuff, the Velcro is still the same, which I think that's actually really dumb. I, I never understood why they went to this Velcro system for patches. Like one tenth of one percent of the military actually has to like remove patches in a zone for security reasons and opsec and don't want the enemy to know what units are here and whatever it's like why don't you just issue the people two sets of desert and woodland uniforms or just issue them three sets of these right and have their patches sewn on and then have one set of sanitized uniforms that you can wear if that need ever arises which it never did for me and never did for anybody that i knew that was conventional troops so anyway that's one gripe I still have. They still have the Velcro on there. Um, but whatever, I guess that's not a big deal. But I just, I just think it looks really dumb. Uh, the breast pockets haven't changed a damn bit. Those suck. But again, because their uh, concept is you're going to be wearing body armor a lot, you're not going to be accessing these quite a bit. Um, obviously, the name tapes and the uh, rank insignia are still in the same spot. Uh, affixed by Velcro, but I understand, like, even before I got out on the ACUs, you were allowed to actually have them sewn on um, your name tapes and then your skill badges and all that shit, like your CIB or jump wings or air assault or pathfinder or whatever the hell else you were hardcore and earned. Um, this pocket's the same thing. It's just a mirror image of the other side. And then this pen pocket actually has, I believe the ACUs had three smaller pockets on the bottom sleeve, um, but this only has two, which is fine because you rarely carry more than one or two pens anyway, even in a garrison setting. Most of the time you're going to have pens laying around, but yeah, we usually just carried one or two and then a notebook up here. So yeah, I don't have a problem with that either because it is what it is. 
And another really big improvement that I've seen on the um, OCP is the use of buttons where they where they can. I like buttons. Buttons are silent. They're really easy to use. I see a buffalo sauce all over my hands. That's why I, I'm not eating Cheetos. Trust me, it's buffalo sauce. I made a shitload of wings for lunch and devoured them. Um, but anyway, so buttons are really good. And on the pants that I'm not I'm not showing in this video because I don't know. I just didn't. I, I need a full size mannequin for this series. I really do. But um, they have buttons on the cargo pockets, which were also on the ACUs. Right before I got out, the last gen of the ACUs had button cargo pockets on the pants, which I really, really appreciated. So overall, I think Velcro should fuck off promptly. I don't like it. I never have. It's stupid. It wears out. It's noisy. And it's really unnecessary. It's cheap. Um, buttons and other stuff are just as... And zippers. I don't mind the zippers. That's actually a good idea. Uh, again, I've never used it in the field, but I think that's a good idea. I would have probably liked to have those a lot better than the Velcro. Uh, I don't think Velcro should be on, or the patches should be on there either. Like, again, just issue somebody four uniforms like you already do, and then they can sew all their shit on and then have one sanitized uniform if need be. This is apparently a multi-terrain pattern. Um, that's what the British pattern is called, actually. <laughs> multi-terrain. But it's a multi-terrain pattern, so this is all they're issuing. They're not issuing a woodland or desert. So, again, I don't understand the need for any Velcro. Your rank's not going to change constantly unless you are super good and then you fuck up a lot and get a bunch of DUIs. You, your rank's going to be pretty consistent for a long time, enough time for you to like be able to go to the the uh, tailor and say, hey, pop this one off and throw my new insignia on. Velcro is just dumb. But, um, oh, I forgot to say, it's the same closure too. It's the zipper with the, again, bullshit Velcro closing. Uh, this stuff does wear out. This wore out all the time, so you'd have shit hanging open, and you get yelled at for that, and just didn't make a lot of sense. Uh, they did, they did remove the Mandarin collar kind of option, which was really smart because I never saw anybody using that. Um, it was just a bunch of extra material and bullshit that was unnecessary. You were in your um, IBA or IOTV at that point when I was in. I never saw anybody doing that because it was more uncomfortable to have your collar popped up like this than it was to just have it underneath your vest and then, you know, maybe wear a shamat or something to, if you it was irritating your neck. So anyway, that's OCP. So kind of the history on it and uh, the current issue and my opinion on it. So a lot of this stuff's anecdotal, but it's just my observations. And I'm actually a big fan of this. I think it looks a little bit, or a, it's a lot more professional than UCP. And um, yeah, hopefully... Hopefully, unless something better rolls around, which I doubt for a while, this is going to be our uniform. Um, the Marines probably aren't going to adopt this, but I've seen a lot of Air Force personnel wearing this, and I don't have a problem with that. So, all right, everybody. Well, I guess that wraps it up. This is going to be one of the longer videos, actually. Wow, for Camouflage of the World. So, thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. If you consider becoming a supporter on Patreon, the link is in the description. It's a dollar a month. Helps me get cool stuff like this to make reviews on. I've got a lot more cool things coming, thanks to my patrons. Um, and I've got a lot more camouflage items coming too to kind of bolster this series. A lot more unique stuff. I've been doing a bunch of generic stuff that's really easy to find. Now I'm going to be getting some more really hard to find stuff thanks to my Patreon supporters. So yeah, I appreciate you uh, just checking that out. If not, just uh, let me know what you think in the comments. If you got any feedback or whatever, it's like this video is what it is. It's not meant to be a super professional, uh, you know, in-depth, you know, not everything about Scorpion or, you know, OCP by the end of it. But just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of a history, a little bit of a rundown, and then uh, my kind of opinion on it. So, all right. Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. And we will see you on the next episode of Camouflage of the World.